Oh, hi everyone, welcome to my channel and today as you can see um, This is the piece that I made and I am going to walk you through my process of How staging and assessment and everything just putting stuff together um, And so today is one of those days where I wish I recorded I started off Just experimenting playing around with stuff and by the time I was done I was like, oh my goodness, I wish I recorded this. Um, so yeah, so we're going to jump into Adobe Dimension and I'm just going to walk you through step by step on um, somewhat clarify how I came up with this piece. Um, but yeah, so let's jump into Adobe Dimension and let's get started. So here in Adobe Dimension, the default always starts with plain white blank canvas. Um, so what you want to do first, what I do is I always start with setting up my uh, canvas size. Um, so I double because I want to put it on Instagram. So I double the pixel size um, to 2160, it's supposed to be 2160, not 2880. Uh, 2160. Okay, there we go. Then I just locked that. Um, so some quick uh, some quick shortcuts is the the key one when you push one it allows you to move around the workspace to rotate around with your mouse as you click and rotate and when you press two on your keyboard it allows you to lift up and down left and right okay so those are the main ones that I usually I usually use. And, and V on the keyboard would change, would allow you to pick, you know, but also those options are also on the, on the, on the far left side of the screen. Um, so yeah, let's jump in. So when I start my scene, I always start with a floor or a ground, a ground plane. And so I pick up a plane and I drop it. And that's what I have here as floor. Okay. Okay, the next one, just to have that room feel of uh, being indoors. I really enjoy architecture and being indoors. So I like to add walls. Um, so a back wall. So as you can see, added a back wall. And sorry if I'm not going into detail, um, I will make uh, more videos on how you know, really like an actual breakdown, but this is, I'm just gonna um, be turning on and off my layers um, just to show you how I added them one after the other. So, sorry if this is not um, a guided step, but I will make a guided step um, in another video. Then, uh, to include or to add to more of that room feel, um, I added a wall, which I called a thick wall. So the reason for this was I wanted it to have um, somewhat of a space between the back wall. So when when the lighting comes through, it kind of casts some nice shadows um, on opposite sides. Um, so after that, I just start dropping in um, my assets. And so I wanted to have like a bathroom kind of outdoor bathroom kind of look and feel which I had inspiration from Pinterest so if you don't like or visit Pinterest I would encourage you for inspiration I mean there are other places but I I, I really appreciate Pinterest it has a, a lot of really good artists um, so I just dragged and dropped a bottle asset which could be found on the left hand side of the models and so there are a lot of models that Adobe gives for free so feel free to just you know pick out the one that you want i was like okay ah, i'll just pick this one so i went with that one uh i changed the size you know and that's another thing too like always considering you know the size the size to its environment making sure that it's not overscaled or underscaled um and also depending on um the distance or how wide of a of a scene you want to have if you want to have a close-up then it's definitely going to be a lot more blown up or larger size in scale but if it's from a distance then the scale would, would vary um, so after that then I just added in uh, what did I drop in next 
I dropped in some plants that I also got um, some free 3D models online. So easy to find. You just go to Google and just type in. Um, but I will leave um, a link, a couple of links in the description where to find these free uh, 3D models. Uh, the next I dropped in... Uh, something I called grass. So it's actually not grass. So it is this model here that I just lowered it down. So it, there it is. So I just lowered it down beneath the plane. Um, then it kind of has that like grass feel aspect, which is <laughs> kind of funny, but yeah. Um, yeah, so that's what I did. Um, then I added the bathtub. Awesome, nice looking bathtub. Um, added the bathtub in there. Then I just got a, I just got one rock, also a free 3D model that I just downloaded. And what I did was I changed the scale of it. So this, these are all these four rocks are the same one. Um, I just changed the scale and rotated it around and um, played around with it. It's uh, different angles. Um, and different shapes but yeah it is just one single seam it's one rock um, so drop that in there then I just made a shelf for the bottles to sit on it should it should appear yep yeah, there it is and that was just uh, the cube so I just took the cube so what I did was I just dropped a cube let me just show you an example I just dropped a cube in there Pressed V on my keyboard, uh, went to, so this is the Y axis. So just work down with the Y axis. So that takes it up or down, you know, changes its height. Um, so once I had it to like a shelf kind of height, I just expanded it, you know, then moved it around. <clears throat> Excuse me. So next, after I had my shelf in there, then I think I added, oh yeah, so this other um, shape, it was a model uh, far right, far on the, on the left side, just down here, over here. So I just clicked and dragged and dropped that one, um, reduced the scale size. Um, We just the scale size, you know, looked at the proportions. Um, so these ones are just an example of if it's like whatever shampoo or um, whatever people use in their bathrooms. <laughs> uh, then I added in some other shapes, which I called wall art. So this is all, I was like, man, this wall looks kind of dull. What, what do I need to do to it to kind of give it some kind of artsy vibe feeling? Um, so again, on the free models that Adobe uh, Dimension gives, uh, there is the half pipe, which I dragged and dropped in there, rotated it up, scaled it up, uh, and just set it in the walls. So I made two. I made uh, two different styles of those. These ones on both sides, and that's the one in the center. And all these were just the same, 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 uh, same half pipe, which are just rotated and scaled up in different in uh, individual like different sizes. So, after I had my scene set up, how I wanted it, now I moved on to trying to get a good camera view. So with the camera view, you pretty much manually, uh, with your shortcut keys or with these options over here, with the orbit tool and uh, the pan tool, what I did was I just arranged orbit, then I'll pan, then I'll zoom in, Orbit, then I'll pan, you know, try to see which one works well, you know, what looks much more appealing to me. Then once I get it, I go all the way up here. I click on the camera uh, camera boot uh, bookmark. And so I go to the plus sign at the bottom and boom, I have my different camera views. So you click on one different view, different view, different view, different view. So I ended up... Uh, uh, I think I decided to go with number five was what I was looking for. Number five. Um, yes, number five. So I just went up a little bit like this. Maybe zoomed in a bit like this. Um, it's 
something like this. Yeah, I think I'll just save this one too. So plus sign number six, and you can name them any ones you any, any name you want, but I just I just go with the default ones that the Adobe gives me. Um, so after that, after setting up my camera view, now I go and work on the textures. So I, I wanted this dark-ish theme um, with metallic gold-ish heavy um, texture looks so that when the light hits them, there is this soft but harsh, hard lighting that happens. Um, so to, to change... Um, so to change the material of the objects or the models, you pretty much click on your model and Adobe Dimension has a bunch of different kind of um, materials here. So what I did was I like the mats. I usually use mats for walls because it's it's more soft. Um, when the light hits it, it looks you know pretty nice and, and common, but also kind of like aggressive at the same time. Um, but also depends on what, what color you turn that mat into. So once I click on that one, once I click on the, the mat tool, it goes to the wall, does a drop down, and you can also change the color. So the, the default, the default color for the mat is usually like a like a, a light gray, dark gray color. So I just decided to go with this like navy, dark navy blue. Um, and you can feel free to copy this um, hex hex uh, hex numbers and use it too. So I did that. I pretty much used the same hex um, color, the same color across the whole piece. Same thing. Um, the bathtub was also, uh, I think that was a mat also. Yes, it was a mat. Everything. So I, I just used two materials, the matte material and uh, where is that gold? And the dark. So this dark, you know, like a brass gold, dark looking uh, material here for the pots. Um, so once I gave each of the models their different materials, then I worked on lighting. So by default, um, it comes with environment lighting. So when you render, let me turn these off. So when you render, it comes with environment lighting. Um, like this, which is, uh, it doesn't really do a whole lot, but Adobe Dimension does provide um, lighting options. So the one that I do really like is the three point light, um, which has a way of capturing different angles of um, of your work area. So I'm not gonna go into too, uh, into details about, you know, key lighting, fill lights and backlights, but feel free to research that online. I think it's, it's really easy to, to understand, uh, to grasp that concept. Um, so I click on my environment lighting and I just select three point lighting. When I click on it, then it pops up in here. And so what I do is I turn all those lights off and then I start from the top and I turn it on to see the effect whilst I am in the render view. So I kind of have a look at that one, see how, see what it looks like and to, 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 to change more of the function of the key lighting to, you know, to adjust it as you want, you know, it has intensity, it has rotations and it has heights. Um, so the intensity is how bright, the rotations is to change the different angles of the lighting. Um, then the height is how close do you want the lighting to your subjects or to your objects um, in your work area. So I just played around with it, you know, found, the, found the, the, the intensity and rotation that worked well for me. Then I moved on to fill lights, turn that one on also while still in render view. Then I would zoom in a bit, you know, then I would zoom out again. I would rotate around just to see, you know, what, how the light is. Um, so a very, a very good uh, way of, of keeping track of the lighting is to look at the shadows. So wherever the lighting is, just look at the shadows that the objects give off. So you can see these, these uh, shadows. You know, the direction also, the direction of the shadows kind of tells you where the lighting is coming from. Um, so after playing around with that, then I just add the next one, the backlighting. 
Then again, the same thing. I do play around with intensity, rotation, and heights. Um, still in render view, whilst I rotate around, um, zooming in, zooming out. I'm just checking to see, you know, how does it look? Um, so my goal for this one was to have, you know, really intense dark shadows um, with some really subtle um, um, highlights. Um, um, and so after this, then I will take it into Photoshop, kind of tweak it around in the camera filter, camera raw filter um, function, and, you know, add more contrast and um, clarity to it. So at the end, after playing around with the lights, I have my material set, I have my scene set, everything pretty much go over to render at the top uh, top left corner, right beside the design, the render panel. You click on it and it brings you to this section where you just choose, you leave it on the current view. You give your file a name and the quality of, so it's best, you know, I, I like to use the low, low and fast so that way you're just kind of saving on the processor. Um, it will sometimes take a while, but it's, it's, it's okay. At the end, it would, it would look good. Um, then I just check both PSD and PNG, so I have both um, file options to edit with if I need to. Then you just select where you want your file to be saved at, and you just click render. So at the end of everything, it would break it down, render it out, um, and your scene is ready. So after that, I would jump into uh, Photoshop. So I would open the document in Photoshop. So I usually, it depends, it depends on what I'm trying to capture, but I usually don't mess around with the Photoshop document. I just go directly with uh, the JPEG. Um, so once the JPEG is here, you just duplicate and you go to filter, camera raw, filter, And here I split the screens. So I have the original view and the current view that I'm gonna be working on. Then I just tweak the contrast, you know, looking at those shadows at the same time, maybe keep the contrast around 12, not too much. Um, look at the highlights. You can see that the ground is kinda of a little bit too bright. So maybe I'll bring it down a bit, you know, lower it down a bit. Um, not too much, maybe like negative three. Play around with the shadows. Mm. Keep her a little bit soft, a little harsh between harsh and soft shadows. So I'll go with like a negative eight. So just zoom in a bit, um, look around. Then clarity, you know, just add a little, little clarity in there, you know, just to make it a little bit sharp a bit. Um, then maybe plus four. Then while, you know, keep checking the different types, you know, so the current view, what you're changing and the, and the previous one or the original. Um, add a little saturation in there, you know. Sometimes I'd like go over just to see, you know, the different changes, how much is being added. And maybe plus eight looks kind of good. Maybe vibrance, maybe like three of the vibrance. I think that's good. I think that's good. Yeah. So click OK. And it is done. Save. And saves as you're ready for posting it on social media. Thank you guys. I uh, hope this was kind of helpful. Sorry, this is not like an in-depth tutorial, um, but hopefully um, in some of my next videos, I will have a more detailed breakdown um, video. But if you like this video, thumbs up. Um, if you interested in subscribing, please do that. And uh, thank you guys for your time. Have a good day. Bye.